Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Samuel Uva, Samuel Mitakarami Uva. Um, as regards the shoe bottoming class, we'll be going through processes of using a fox welt on a pair of shoes. Um, so um, just a few of the items we'll be accustomed with during this class. So you have your hammer, your utility knife or cutter, a pair of scissors, glue and gum brush, um, a strip of rough sandpaper, a wooden block lined with same rough sandpaper, a silver pen, a fox welt, a vibram sole which can be cut and shaped to the size of the shoe and then yeah our shoe for this purpose. Pardon my um, having to make use of um, off cuts of materials but this has been lasted um, and awaiting placement of the welt. We'll get straight to it and um, I hope you get to be an insightful um, experience and class. We all are aware that there's an insole which is like the foundation on which the shoe is built on or I would say built beneath. So once you must have been done lasting your lining, placing of your back stiff and front stiff and eventual lining, um, lasting of the upper, it is advisable to fill the void which is the space in between. Now, this is done so that um, when you're done placing the sole, this void is not um, visible, so it's actually sealed off. For where your welt would go on, is actually at the edge, at the border of the shoes, all the way around. Now, the border is um, marked by the insole, so once you touch the sides, you can actually feel, I hope you guys can see this, there's actually a bump here. So once you feel the bump, you know that is the border of where your welt is going to be attached so i would mark this out briefly so that we can all we can all see where the welt would go on now um in getting the placements for the inner curve of either foot is um somewhat tricky being that it's not that visible as it's not as visible as the outer curve so just use your thumb as as a guide So now what I'm going to do is um, use the strip of rough sandpaper I spoke about. I'm currently walking from home, you know, so um, I'll do it the good old fashioned way. Making use of genuine suede for your walks, you really do not need to sand off the suede parts of the shoes because suede by nature has a rougher look than plain or glossed um, genuine leather. So probably the only place we're going to be paying attention to is this point here to here and the one on the opposite side from here to here. However, you can also make use of um, your filing machine to get this done faster. You know? Okay, so uh, let's, let's get to it. We are done with that. Let's just um, mark off again. And we'll take this marking thing all around so that this is not visible for us to copy see. Now, I'm going to be talking a bit about the welt that we're going to be making use of today. It's actually a fox welt. Now, um, the term fox refers to items that are of a synthetic nature. You know, that have, um, have been produced using several combinations of um, chemicals under controlled environments to produce a particular material. So you have fox welt, fox leather, you know. So um, I'm done marking this, I'll put this aside and then talk about the welt. I was going to be making it up. Now, as opposed to um, genuine leather welt, you know, this is a fox welt made of rubber and um, stitched. You know, in a way to make the genuine thing. You know, however, it serves its own purpose, as we would um, see closely. However, there are things I need to point out when using fox welt. Because it's synthetic in nature, it really doesn't give you the adhesion or the bond you would um, get when using a genuine leather welt. Now, that means you have to take further steps to ensure that holds or it absorbs glue which in turn bonds it to your to the soles you'll be making use of so if you i hope my camera can focus on this you would actually notice this has been roughened up a bit to make adhesion of the glue um, more efficient all right so um if you would notice in this synthetic welds we're making use of the part that actually goes onto the bottom part of the shoe what i'm going to do is use this and roughen it 
you know so um when we apply glue it's it holds onto it um better we're done roughening this up too much you could actually see the difference rough smooth now um your welt is going to start on start and end on the inner curve of the pair of shoes you're making so make a make a mark see somewhere there you know and um take this round remember this part goes on the bottom of the shoes and then step one or one way you could actually get the length of the welt you're going to be making use of is taking this round the edge of the shoes Now, kindly note that the steps I'm showcasing here are steps that I've used and have been accustomed to over a certain period of time. And as such, are not to be taken as the standard or the status quo. I have gotten to find out that, okay, this particular technique works for me. 2 plus 2 is 4. 8 minus 4 is also 4. 10 minus 6 is also 4. So whatever formula works for you, just, you know, go ahead. As long as it gives you satisfaction and also makes your work stand out. So we are at the end at the start point so you would expect us to cut this weld here at this point however um i made this mistake also when starting um, to use welds in the construction of my soles i noticed however that they would lap but when filing off the soles and attaching the shoes there will be a considerable gap so what i do is i leave an excess so this is where we're going to cut this off okay scissors um, yep there we go okay so what i'll do is apply glue this length and then apply glue slightly on the bottom of our shoes okay all right so glue time coming up next glue brush and just just a little just run it on the edge okay allow this to dry off and then for our shoes Okay, so um, we'll just allow this dry off till it's um dry to the touch. Say, give or take um two three minutes. Okay, so I'll catch you guys back in two three minutes. Okay. All right, bye. <clears throat> All right, guys and ladies, we're back. So um um. It's dry to the touch. That should be an indicator to let you know when it's all ready to start um, glowing. So um, remember, this is our start point. I would um for. I'm not using a point of view camera. You know, so um, we would have to do this good old way. I hope the lens captures this. You know, so um, you just. Go with the flow. Back to where we started. Now, if I was going to um, cut this here, you would still have that space. So what I usually do is cut, say, that much. Okay. shows that um, when transferring it to the sole blank, which is this old vibram sole I had lying around, it actually fits and it fits um, snugly. So you don't have that space afterwards. Okay. All right. So next step is placing this onto this and then tracing out where it would um, sit. Okay. All right. Very important to note that if you're using soles that have um, specific patterns beneath them it's advisable to place and gauge the shoes in a way that would centralize them now you don't want to shift it too much to one side or to the other excuse me now you, you find out that 
we've all had one or two customers who are very particular about the details to um, the footwear, even as much as going to align the soles of both shoes together to know if they were placed in, you know, unison. So, and, uh, This just serves as a guide as to where you're going to uh, eventually place or glue on. So once we're done with that, we apply we apply glue to we want this to uh, dry for say five ten minutes or until it's dry to the touch. Now, what you're going to do, secondly, after applying glue to the vibram so or the platform in 10 reason as so, apply glue slightly just where the welt, you know, covers. Right, guys, we're back. So, um, this is, um, dry to the touch. So we are going to um, place this. So what you want to do is um, using the outline made from tracing it initially, just place it down. And, um, when when that is done, what you can do is um, pull this out from beneath the shoe. 